All right, NASCAR fans, this one is for you. The fabulous Julia Landauer, who is uh, one of the awesome female racers, is joining me on the phone right now. Julia, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure. I feel like that is a, a terrible introduction I just gave you, only because you're, <laughs> you're so much more than that. Um, there, yeah, there's a lot going on, but I think you did a great job. Well, you Don't have worry. quite a bio, and uh, Nick and I were just saying uh, we feel like underachievers just even looking at your bio, <laughs> um, because not only a NASCAR driver, but also uh, graduated from Stanford a couple of years ago with a science, technology, and society degree. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds cool. Um, you were on Survivor, on CBS, you're, you've done a TED Talk. I mean, I don't even know where to start with you. So of all the different things that you um, are doing and have done, is NASCAR the favorite? Yeah, I mean, racing is really where the passion lies. And I started when I was 10 years old. It was an activity that my parents wanted me and my siblings to do so that we could be together on the weekends and so that their girls could do something against boys competitively. And I fell in love with it. It has been the, you know, the thing that has made me the most proud that I feel like I want to work the hardest at. It's so much fun. It's kind of like it's addicting. You catch the bug and then you can't let it go. So that being said, um, I really view my racing and my racing career as kind of a platform from which I can do other stuff as well and, and you know, give back and help empower others and do other cool stuff. And, you know, I just feel like life is short. There's a lot to do. And uh, I'm very lucky that I get to tackle it all. Yeah, um, I love that you're using the platform uh, for other things aside from just sort of self-promotion. And I want to get to that in just a minute. But um, given that you did get into the sport so young and you were already doing it and loving it and knowing and, and, you know, making history even at, you know, 14 years old, what made you want to go to Stanford and get the degree that you got? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and it's a couple fold. One, I went to a pretty competitive math and science high school in New York City, Stuyvesant High School. And so kind of, you know, more intense academics is something that I always liked. And, you know, I like learning. And also racing is a somewhat unique sport in that it is not just uh, the skill and the talent around the actual competition. You know, it's a very financially driven sport and we need sponsors and partners um, to to drive the sport, if you will. And uh -huh. <laughs> um, so with that and knowing kind of what my family situation was, you know, how long they were going to be able to fund my racing and when that was going to stop, I just was very conscious of the fact that I needed to be business savvy as well. And so in addition to just wanting to learn and, you know, be a better, more well-rounded person, in my opinion, um, I knew that I had a lot to learn from a business side. So that was something that I focused on in school. What was really cool about STS, my science, technology, and society degree, was that it allowed me to become technically literate in certain areas that I was interested in, but then it was also very interdisciplinary. So I was able to take psychology classes and learn, you know, how are people attracted to, you know, their heroes or how do you attract a larger audience how do you communicate with people who you don't interact with daily so there was a lot of cool stuff to do there that went beyond the classroom in terms of helping my career very cool uh nascar driver julia landauer on the phone with us right now and julia i'm sure people ask you uh, mostly questions about sort of the driving itself but um, I actually want to stick, you know, to this education piece for a minute and this platform piece for a minute, because talking about, um, you know, science and technology and society, I mean, this is a really interesting time for all of those topics. I think just today there was a news report about SpaceX, you know, landing a rocket back, you know, safely on the ground. And we're hearing uh, all kinds of stories in and around, you know, cybersecurity and, you know, cyber warfare and all of that. Are you kind of staying up with all of that stuff and keeping your eye on it? Definitely. And, um, you know, I part of what was also cool about going to school was that I was able to see kind of the technical application in fields that weren't my own and not just automotive, uh, for instance. And so it's, it's so intertwined. And I think that the more that I can help and that we as a society can help, you know, younger generations see that there are those STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math applications in virtually every industry. I think it spins a kind of different light so you don't have the stereotypical you know, software engineer sitting in a basement um, stereotype where you can 
you know, kids and young people from all different kinds of backgrounds could get excited at the prospect of applying some kind of technical knowledge to a greater um, aspect of society, whether that is in, you know, space, in, uh, you know, healthcare, in, in food. I mean, food is chemistry and science and cooking. You know, it's all applicable. So I think illustrating the diversified areas that you can apply STEM concepts or STEAM concepts, if you want to include arts in there, um, is really important. Absolutely. Listen, one of the reasons that uh, we have Julia Landauer on the phone right now, um, who is you know best known for her NASCAR racing, um, is because you're going to be in Atlanta for LeaderCast Women uh, coming up uh, later this week on Friday, October 12th. And, um, you know, you talked about using your platform for, you know, to talk about STEM education, as you just were, but also for women's empowerment. And, you know, obviously, you know, you're one of few women in NASCAR. And certainly we've heard a lot about, you know, the number of women that uh, are not in STEM fields and all of that. So how are you sort of taking a leadership role in, in sort of trying to not only encourage everyone in terms of STEM education, but in terms of, you know, women in all of these fields, yours, NASCAR, uh, science, and the world in general? Yeah, that's a great question. And I try to do that in a couple of ways. You know, one is, um, you know, in interviews I do and in my social media, I try to have that consistent, meaningful messaging, not bombarding people, but just, you know, discussing my thoughts and kind of where things stand and giving my commentary. And then also through motivational speaking, it's really cool and very exciting uh, to get on stage. And I have been, I think, very lucky in my life to be able to experience a bunch of different things and to have been encouraged to go after what I love and to be supported. And I've learned a lot of very valuable lessons that I think many people don't learn until they're later in their adult lives. And so part of me just feels compelled to help share that with people. You know, I got, um, you know, I have, I have parents who were super involved in my entire life, for good and for bad sometimes, but um, <laughs> to be able to share those stories with people and kind of give concrete examples, be very vulnerable to the audiences, sharing what I, you know, what my experiences were, what I didn't do well, what I learned from, and then usually the audience, whether male or female or mixed, they're able to relate to something in that story. And I take the view that if I was able to help one person overcome some obstacle or you know, get a little kick in the butt that they needed from they weren't getting. If I was able to help one person, that's a successful, uh, you know, time on stage. Julia, we're almost down to the last, you know, 45 seconds to a minute here. But I have to ask you, at least briefly, um, being a woman in NASCAR, have you felt like you've always been treated fairly or have you felt that you are significantly somebody different in that field? I think it's somewhere in the middle. I have definitely noticed areas where I feel like I have to work harder. I think I have to work harder to gain the respect of my team to convince them that we are capable of winning. I think being a woman who wins in racing isn't the norm yet, so doing that. But then at the same time, I've had really great allies who have stood up for me, who have recognized when I'm not treated fairly and have vocalized that. So I think I've had a pretty good experience, but you definitely feel like an outsider to a certain extent. And so just trying to find that um, that common ground with everyone I work with has been probably the best uh, advice that I've been able to receive and then implement. I love that. Julia, thank you so much for spending some time with us on the phone today. And we look forward to having you in Atlanta for LeaderCast Women on Friday. Again, that was Julia Landauer, a NASCAR racer. We all post a link to all things Julia on our show notes page at DanaBarrett.com and LeaderCast Women as well. And we'll be right back. More Dana Barrett Show coming up on Talk Radio 640 WGST.